Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today, in this uh, Tier 9 ranked battle here in the Shards map, I just want you to take a look at that matchmaking for a moment. Is that not a destroyer captain's wet dream? No carriers, no cruisers, so no radar, nothing but other destroyers and big fat stupid battleships to feast on. The destroyer captains, especially the gunboat destroyers like the Kitakaze, must be thinking, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> and the battleships must all be thinking, Mama, <laughs> I don't like this anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, you might be surprised. I mean, when faced with three destroyers, and no cruiser backup and support on your own team, most battleship captains would be thinking, Mama, I don't like this anymore, I want to go home. But apparently the captain of that pommel on the enemy team never got that memo. More on him later. For now, this is... How do you pronounce that anyway? Tagila? Tagila? Tagia? I... The guy who sent the replay in, based on the name associated with his email, appears to be Greek. But that doesn't help. I don't know how the Greek pronounced that either. So <laughs> we're just going to call him Tag. Tag and the Italian Tier 9 Premium Destroyer, the Paolo Emilio. Yes, we have seen this ship before. It has a certain notorious status in the World of Warships community. On paper, this ship looked like an utter disaster when it was first being introduced. And the community contributors were looking at the stats without having the opportunity to actually play it beforehand. I mean, yes, it's really, really fast. With the engine boost running, this will easily go faster than 50 knots. I mean, it will outrun some torpedoes. It is very fast. But the guns have a horrible reload and the torpedoes have terrible range. But it's the high-speed smokescreen that makes it all work. Oh, hang on a second. He's picked up... There's an enemy over here. You can see he's got the radio position finding skill, so he knows the closest enemy is, well, basically that way, and it's a Benham. Right, so the Benham, uh, not much use in the gunfight. Well, they're not completely useless, uh, but very, very nasty torpedo threat. The Benham, quite famously, is capable of having up to 36 torpedoes in the water at the same time. Although fortunately for Tag, and rather unfortunately for the Benham, um, he encountered it at the best possible moment for him because there is no way the Benham got any torpedoes away down that gap. Certainly not at the angle uh, that would have been required at the moment where Tag and the Benham spotted each other. So he doesn't have to worry about any torpedoes yet. And he got to the cap circle before the Benham did. Well, that's very brave. Okay, there will be torpedoes coming now, but the Benham's... Yeah, he's popping smoke. He figured it was worth the risk to reacquire the targets, because there is more than one of them here. Tag's been joined in this cap circle by a Fletcher. I'm not entirely sure why. There's no way the Fletcher, which is a very, very good destroyer, by the way, but there is no way that Fletcher was ever going to get here before him, and it's not like he really needs the Fletcher's help. I mean, three destroyers per side, there are three cap circles. This is not a difficult mathematical equation. The Kitakaze, this was a bad choice by the way, was heading south to Cap Circle Alpha. He's the slowest destroyer in this battle and he picked the furthest Cap Circle away. Uh, he was persuaded by another teammate to not do that and is now helping to contest and in fact has flipped the cap circle at Bravo, which is something that I feel like the Fletcher would have had a better job doing, but oh, oh, speaking of destroyers, the Yugamo. Now, everybody's popping their Hydro because you've got a Yugamo on one side and a Benham on the other. So, expect torpedoes. Expect a lot of torpedoes. The Benham has four torpedo launchers. The Yugamo, I think, only has two, but it has a torpedo reload booster and the smoke screen. It doesn't have to choose. Yep, there are the Benham torpedoes. And unfortunately for the Yugamo, um, well, it was either going too fast to stay inside its smoke screen, or it was inside somebody's hydro range. Either way, that's first blood to the Kitakaze. Yeah, getting spotted there, and there are the Yugamo torpedoes. Oh, and the Black's trying to get involved too. Brave move from the Black, getting involved in a gunfight with, well, 
He was in range of the Kitakaze, and he's also definitely in range of the friendly Pond secondaries, and possibly the possibly the friendly Frederick the Great secondaries as well, depending on how the Frederick the Great's captain has specced his ship. He's popping his smoke, but you you do know you're still spotted, right? Because you're inside hydro range of the Pommon. The Black has not only stopped while spotted, he stopped while... No, did you see that? <laughs> he just unloaded his guns into the island. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, he's dead too. Uh, he managed to stop in a position where everybody could shoot at him, but he couldn't shoot at anybody that he could see. So, yeah. First two kills and two cap circles to Tag's team. And that's great news, or it would be great news. Looking at the health bar of the Frederick the Great over there, that is not fantastic. But with two destroyers of three sunk already on the enemy team, that would be considered fantastic news for the battleships on Tag's team. But yeah, the Frederick the Great over there has just been sunk. The enemy Pommen got him. The Pommen over there, however, well, not over there, over there, there he is, he does have that Benham with him. The only surviving destroyer on the enemy team. It's just three battleships, the Prince Ruprecht over there, the Jean Bart B over there, and the Pommen who just claimed the first kill, for the enemy team at least, on the friendly Frederick the Great. For now, however, those are all somebody else's problem as Tag is closing in on the enemy Jean Bart B. Meanwhile, as he closes the distance, the friendly Pommen is not having a good day either. And I'm not entirely sure how. I mean, he should only be getting shot at by the enemy Pommen. But he's managed to back up enough that he's also getting shot at by the Jean Bart B down there, I think. Although he's immune to fire from the Prince Ruprecht. I suppose he could have eaten a couple of torpedoes because there were a lot of torpedoes up there a minute ago, but he was running his hydro. I am at a loss to explain how one Pommen, the enemy Pommen, can be winning a fight against a Fletcher, a Kitakaze, a Jean Bart B, and another Pommen, with or without support from the Benham. Because he is very much winning that fight, and he has just sunk the friendly Pommen with his secondaries. But here we go, the Paolo Emilio. And the reason why it's also known as the Yolo Emilio, or the Paolo Emiliolo. It's the high speed smoke that makes this ship work. It does have to close the suicide range. Thankfully, the Jean Bart B just fired off its guns with this 50 kilometer an hour smoke screen charging towards him, allowing Tag to make some last minute course corrections. It's a very high risk, high reward strategy in this ship because you do have to close the suicide range in order to hit anything with these pathetically short range torpedoes. But the high speed smoke allows you to get so close, so fast, that there is very little an enemy battleship can do other than hope it one-shots you in the tiny window of opportunity it gets in which to do that. And the Jean Bart didn't. Might have been a different story if Tag had chosen to YOLO rush the Prince Ruprecht or the Pommen because they get Hydro, but that's why he went for the Jean Bart. Not just because he knew the Benham was nowhere near and couldn't support it, but the Jean Bart is French and it doesn't get Hydro, so it got one shot at him, and then it was good night Vienna. And now he's down here, he can flip this cap circle at Alpha. While the enemy team have flipped the cap circle at Charlie, all the way at the other end of the map. What is the Fletcher doing? How was that allowed to happen? I mean, if you look at the map, you can see the Fletcher cowering between two islands, not inside the cap circle at Alpha. I guess he's so terrified both of the Benham's torpedoes and the Pommen secondaries that he just allowed that cap to be flipped. It's likely that the Pommen has him hydroed, but it, you can see he's actually reversing away down that channel, trying to get away from the Pommen, which means with his nose pointing towards him he can't get any torpedoes away. And since he's reversing he's too slow, <laughs> the Pommen's killed him as well. So kill number three to the enemy Pommen. It's not all terrible news of course because well, I mean, it's now three versus three, but Tag's team are still ahead on points. And they do have two of the three cap circles. And the Jean Bart B up there is defending the one and only cap circle that the enemy team are in a position to flip. The central one here at Bravo Tag is rushing to his assistance at full speed. And the Jean Bart B, as a French battleship, does 
have a unique advantage here in that it doesn't have to expose any kind of broadside because all of its guns are in the front to tank incoming fire from the two enemy battleships. He's full on bow tanking the Pommen that cannot overmatch his bows and he's angled against the Prince Ruprecht that also cannot overmatch his bows. Unfortunately, despite the fact that Tag is rushing up here as quick as he can to support him, he's having to do it completely alone because as fast as Tag is rushing up here to support the Jean Bart B, the Kitakazi off in the distance there is running away from supporting the Jean Bart B. And those look like Benham torpedoes. Oh dear. Although it's the Pommen who's going to finish him off. Kill number four. Well, a little late. Although, as fast as he could possibly have managed, Tag is... It's not quite exactly the same tactics against the Prince Ruprecht as he employed against the Jean Bart, because that's a German battleship. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hydro and secondaries are nasty. He's seen the torpedoes, obviously. But there is one torpedo launcher on the other side that he saved just for this occasion, although he didn't need it. There goes the Prince Ruprecht, Tag's second kill. And it's only now that there is no longer either a friendly battleship to support or an enemy battleship to sink that the Kitakazi turns around and starts heading back down in this direction. Although it may have been the Kitakazi's plan, and I'm not sure it was a good one, to sneak up there and flip the cap circle at Alpha, but he did spot the Benham. And that distraction is going to seal his fate because the Benham realised he got spotted whether through luck or judgment, waited for the Kitakazi to fire its guns, ensuring that the Kitakazi would be visible for the next 20 seconds, the Benham popped his smoke, which meant that the only thing the Kitakazi succeeded in doing was giving its position away while getting shot at, not just by the Pommens secondaries and primaries, but also by the guns of the smoked-up Benham. So the Pommen claims his fifth kill, and the Kraken unleashed. Maybe the Kitakazi was attempting to flip the cap circle at Alpha, Maybe it wasn't. It did manage to get torpedoes away, however, and sink the Benham. And that is fantastic news for Tag. Because he's now the last ship left alive on his team against an enemy ship, the Pommen, that sunk every other member of his team. But he doesn't have to worry about the Benham. Now, you might be thinking, in a battle with no carriers to spot them from the air and no cruisers to radar them, how the hell can the destroyers be getting their asses kicked by the battleships? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's an excellent question. And I think I know the answer. I think we've seen a couple of examples of exactly why. In the case of, for example, the Black, it either didn't know or didn't respect the danger posed by German secondaries, such as those found on the Pommen. Or at the other end of the scale, you've got ships like the Kitakazi that was so terrified of Pommen secondaries that they completely abandoned teammates to die. And then you've got Tag here in the Paolo Emilio, who I think it's safe to conclude sits somewhere comfortably between those two extremes. He's aware of how dangerous the Pommen secondaries can be. If that's the case, Jingles, why is he shooting at the Pommen and getting shot at by the Pommen secondaries? Well, he's doing that for a couple of good reasons. He's not just getting shot at by the Pommens secondaries, he's also getting shot at by the Pommens main battery guns. And yeah, it's a bit of a risk, but it's a calculated one. And yeah, he took some damage, but it was damage he could afford to take. And he did it for some very, very good reasons. The Pommens capping. And there's seven minutes of this game left. And while Tag is ahead on points, he's not so far ahead on points that he can still win if the Pommen flips two cap circles. So he needed to reset the Pommen, and he's done it again. And he also needed the Pommen to shoot at him, and not just with its secondaries. He needed the Pommen to shoot at him with its main gun batteries. So he could pop his high-speed smoke, the Pommen would stay visible for 20 seconds after firing its main gun batteries, and he could continue to reset for as long as possible. His high-speed smoke doesn't last forever, of course. But that's fine, because it means he gets to reset the Pommen again and set yet another fire. Paolo Emilio, of course, doesn't get armor-piercing ammunition, just high-explosive and semi-armor-piercing, and he's using the high-explosive now because he needs to stack damage and resets on that enemy battleship, and he's now just far enough, and there isn't a huge window of opportunity for you to do this because the Pommen's secondaries have such good range, but he's now just far enough that he can still get a final, hopefully, resetting shot off. No, they missed. Uh, without being subjected to the Pommen's secondary gun batteries. 
and um, and the Pullman didn't have the reload to fire the main gun batteries at him. So Tag's now up to over 900 points. He doesn't have the two cap advantage anymore. The Pullman is going to flip that central cap at Bravo. There's no longer anything that Tag can do about it. But he doesn't really need to do anything about it. Not anymore. I mean, sure, with a two cap advantage of the Pullman in the slightly more than five minutes that are remaining of this game can easily make up the 200 point difference between these two teams and win on points or we would be able to do that if he actually had five minutes remaining he doesn't because it's going to take substantially less than five minutes for tag to go from the 928 points that he's currently on to the 1000 points that he needs to win so the pommen doesn't have five minutes he's in the nightmare scenario of being in a battleship and not a particularly slow battleship a battleship that on paper has lots and lots of useful tools against destroyers. It's got hydro. It's got extremely good, accurate, fast-firing and long-range secondaries. But he's playing against a destroyer who knows that he's winning and doesn't feel the pressure to win any harder than he already is. The Pommon's only chance is for Tag to be dumb enough to try to win harder and go after him. And sadly, in 9 out of 10 other battles, that's probably what would happen and the Pommon might win. But this isn't 9 out of 10 other battles. And Tag's going to make doubly sure that the Pommon doesn't get ahead on points by flipping this cap circle up here at Charlie. Again, for the second time in this match. And there is no way the Pommon's going to catch him. Because he can do nearly 50 knots. And while the Pommon is not a slow battleship, it's nowhere near fast enough. By sailing into this cap circle and spotting the Pommon, Tag has just given the Pommon an extreme long shot chance. There it is. So the Pommon knew when he'd been spotted. He knew that Tag was in the cap circle and he knew that the only way Tag could be seen him was through the gap in between those two islands. So he just took a wild shot between the gap in those two islands. It was the last chance that he had. It was a desperate one. And he wasn't that far off the mark. But when you're in a battleship and you're playing against a destroyer captain who's capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, is playing for the win rather than winning harder, there's almost no chance that you're ever going to do it. So well done to the Pommon. I mean, Kraken Unleashed in a game where you only have six opponents. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Unfortunately, the final opponent was Tag. And Tag was playing to win, not to win harder. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.